Welcome to Under the Lens. Come and enjoy an extraordinary, raw, and unfiltered podcast that delivers debate, discussions, and interviews about film, pop culture, and everything in between. Here is your host, film critic and journalist, Byron Lafayette. Greetings, all, and welcome to uh, Under the Lens. Uh, I'm your host, Byron Lafayette, and uh, today we have a very special topic that we're going to be talking about. This is one that's uh, very close to my heart, and I know it's also very close uh, to the heart of uh, my special guest today, who uh, graciously agreed to uh, come on and discuss uh, discuss this topic. So we are going to be talking about uh, the series finale uh for Picard. And by finale, I'm talking about the entire third season, not just the last episode. Uh, Because basically, it felt like, you know, season three Picard was like one big like movie episode type thing. So we're going to be talking about the whole the whole season and uh, how we uh, how we feel about it and everything. So uh, my guest today is uh, is Jordan Morris. And uh, I uh, I'm pretty good friends with uh, his brother. And uh, then I connected with uh, with Jordan. And we just basically as soon as we met, it was uh, it was like we were just long lost friends or brothers. <laughs> as soon as we started talking about Star Trek, and so I immediately had to uh, had to get him on to uh, to talk about Picard and other things. Uh, so welcome to uh, the program, Jordan. Thanks, bro. Cutis. Glad to be here. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> oh, that is amazing. <laughs> I had to save that one up just for you. <laughs> that was awesome. Uh, <laughs> Man, so definitely very excited to uh, to have you on to to talk about Picard. Um, I know that uh, that you're a big uh, Star Trek fan. I know that you've uh, you've seen the entire series of Picard, all three seasons, um, and so I'm assuming probably we'll we'll probably touch on different aspects uh, of the whole uh, show as we're talking about the final season. But just a warning to to everybody who's listening right now. Um, uh, you know, there's definitely going to be spoilers in this discussion. So we're going to be going into, you know, a ton of different stuff and like all the big reveals and everything. So if you haven't seen season three of Picard yet, uh, just feel free to pause this uh, podcast, go through and finish it. And you'll enjoy it a lot more uh, uh, when you come back. Um, so, uh, so Jordan, what was, uh, what was your, your kind of first thoughts on season three of Picard? Like, you know, uh, what was your, your general, general feeling going into it? Well, after season one of two, one and two, which a lot of people did like, I was not one of those people. I don't know if I'd say I loved it. There were things I did and things I didn't. Um, but, you know, I was hoping from like, are, are we going to get something a little bit closer to what Star Trek The Next Generation was? And then we got that announcement. It's been, it was last April, April 2022, um, with that announcement trailer with the cast and was on star trek day i believe and not gonna lie the music started playing the first two names popped up and i was a complete blubbering idiot and i was full-on super excited like engaged if you'll pardon the pun um (laughs) from then on that's uh, pretty much my my same experience as well like you know um i i rather enjoyed you know season one and two of, of picard you know there was definitely there was definitely some some aspects that i didn't like there was some stuff that you know i thought was a little odd um but overall i appreciated you know kind of uh patrick stewart's you know um you know goal to tell a different type of story for his character and so i did appreciate that with those first two seasons and definitely there's there's aspects of it that i was like oh man that just like hit me in the feels you know with season one and two uh so overall i i generally had a good experience with that but yeah when when i saw that announcement and saw everyone who was coming back and that this was a this was basically this was season eight you know of the next generation yes, absolutely i just was like i was so i i honestly can't think of another time that i've been that excited for something in like movies and pop culture the only other time that i think i might have been as excited was when the snyder cut was announced uh that's maybe the only other time <laughs> you know it's like uh, valid and fair point absolutely yeah because it was just like you know because i grew up you know with uh the next generation you know now now i will say i didn't get into the next generation tv show until i was way way older um 
but I grew up watching like all six of the original uh, crew, you know, films with Kirk. And I grew up watching all of the original uh, Next Generation movies as well. And so kind of when I got older in college, you know, uh, the um, Next Generation popped up on streaming. And so I just started watching it and I was just like completely just mesmerized as I was seeing it, you know, because I already felt like I knew these characters in the movies, but just getting to them, know them all over again was just was just incredible. And, and it was kind of like, it was interesting because uh, I had kind of been taking my time going through the next generation and seeing it all. And so I'd watched it all through and then I'd gone through, you know, the movies obviously afterwards. And it was right around that time that, that I was ending that journey that uh, it was about a year or two later that they announced like season one of Picard. And so like, I, I had this experience of going into it relatively fresh off of my TNG journey. And so I think it just kind of, it made it a, a little bit more interesting for me personally that, you know, to kind of see it all in this kind of like years long journey that I'd been on. That's awesome. So I grew up, with it, I think I literally learned to count on the first six Star Trek movies. Um, I actually wore out two VHS copies of Wrath of Khan oh, before I, I was two. Mm-hmm. I'm some kids watch Barney, some kids watch Sesame Street. I was the kid who watched Star Trek, so uh-huh. <laughs> I guess it turned out all right. Uh, <laughs> but dude, um, I yeah, re- it's go ahead. Oh no, I was gonna say I remember as, as a kid I was probably about seven years old, six seven years old, and I remember seeing the uh, the um, the um, uh, undiscovered country and oh, I loved it. I just remember I just absolutely adored it. <laughs> First movie I ever saw in theaters was Undiscovered Country. Oh, it's just it's still still one of the best Star Trek movies, I would say. You oh, know. without a doubt. Mm-hmm. And when Generations came out, mm-hmm. they would have had a cow at me nowadays. But um I, I I had a full on like breakdown at four years old in the theater. They killed Captain Kirk mommy. <laughs> Screamed the entire way to the car. Parents oh. took me home, put me to bed. Woke up the next morning, had breakfast, halfway through realized what happened and lost it again. Oh. I was wrecked for like three days. Oh. Dude, I, re- I remember being really sad about it because, you know, because because I, I was younger when I saw Generations and, uh, you know, and I'd seen all of the, the original movies and everything. And and yeah, it was it was really sad, you know, and especially because I was a kid. So I didn't, you know, necessarily view it as, oh, you know, his his death or ending was lackluster or whatever. It was just like it was the end of an era for me. <laughs> it was like, yeah, you, you lost know? your hero. Uh, oh, yeah. And it was like and I loved Picard, you know, uh, and stuff. But it was like it was very, very sad, sad to see that. And I think it's probably those feelings that I have as a kid and those memories of seeing Generations, why I have such a soft spot for that movie, even though there's problematic elements to it. I, I still really like it. <laughs> oh, yeah, absolutely. There, It's got some it's got its flaws, but mm-hmm. w- what it hits on when it hits is great. Mm hmm. It's true. And and also I, I will I will fight anybody who does not like the last words of Captain Kirk being it's been fun, <laughs> you know, because that was that was classic Kirk, you know, I think he ad libbed that, too, because he thought really? it was too dull. Uh-huh. I, I want to say I read that. I, I don't quote me on it, but I think I did read that. It feels that that feels like an ad libbed like Captain Kirk, like, you know, moment. And, you know, and I, I honestly, I, I loved that. Like, even though I still do view the death as a little lackluster and I would have preferred something a little bit more, uh, you know, bombastic maybe for his exit. I do love those last words because it just it feels very much like <laughs> like Kirk, you know, <laughs> oh. quick, quick sidebar. Have you seen the new short that was just released that takes place right after Generations? called I have, regeneration i have not no <laughs> oh well, i'm not going to say anything um but uh to anyone listening if you have not watched this it's uh it's sponsored by the roddenberry archive and the name of a company who does some very cutting edge special effects work which escapes me it's like otoh or something is the in- initials on um on youtube but it, it it ties back into generations and in season three of picard um Ooh, huh? but it's definitely worth a watch so maybe we'll discuss later on oh definitely i i would be very curious to see that so yeah i'll definitely after this podcast is over i'll, I'll go and watch that <laughs> yeah so yeah so going to going to going back to you know so going into i should say season three of uh of picard you know this this show was was one that was just you know loaded down with characters, both new characters, uh, returning characters from uh, you know from Picard the series itself, and also of course returning characters from not only uh, the Next Generation show but also the Next Generation movies. 
Um, this is very much a uh, this is very much a, a reunion of everything, uh, almost everything, even Star Trek too, because there was characters from other shows that that popped up, even like Voyager and uh, you know references and stuff from Deep Space Nine. There was just there was so much there. Um, so you know, is there, in your opinion, like what what are the character journeys from season three that you felt hit the hardest, and that you felt were maybe the 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 most well done? Oh wow. I know that's so, like an extremely huge, broad question. No, but it's it's a great question. And so first off, like having grown up with these characters, and I think you can attest to this, like when when All Good Things, the Next Generation finale aired, it was like old friends or your aunts and uncles, a part of your family was going off somewhere. Absolutely. And then when the movies came out, you got to see them and you were just – you know, whatever people hate on the next generation movies, I will not be one of those people. Um, but you know, you were just so happy to see them. Um, it's like you got to catch up with family and, you know, we saw them four times till 2002 when nemesis came out. And then, uh, we won't talk about the enterprise finale. (laughs) We won't go there. (laughs) We will not Um, go there. (laughs) What enterprise finale? (laughs) Exactly. Uh, but you know, I mean, I remember when Picard first aired, like, I was just so happy to see Patrick Stewart. I mean, it just had like tears of joy just streaming down my face. I think I watched the episode three times that I think it actually premiered on my birthday and I watched it like three times that day. But then, you know, we've, we've come through a couple of seasons and, um, you know, I was sort of, I struggled a little bit in season one, you know, it was great to see, uh, Troy and Riker, but like, you know, they lost their son. They lost that. And, you know, you always want the happy ending and I am a sucker for a happy ending, but life is not always easy or fair. And, you know, it added some depth to it, which we got to touch on again this season. And, you know, grief is a different process for everybody. And it takes a lot of time. I think uh, basically from what I've read and gathered, it's, I mean, it's been three, four, five years since they've lost him, but I mean, for any parent losing a child and I can't relate and I hope I never have to, but like, it's a lot to process. And they, when they hit on it for both Troy, you know, she felt the weight of everyone's grief, which honestly I wouldn't have never considered, but it was a real, that was a really interesting aspect there. And then Riker was just like going through the motions and got, I mean, Riker always had a zest for life. If you couldn't Very say nice. anything about him, he mm-hmm. always did. And he went from just being, you know, you know, going through the motions to just really, this is probably the best Riker arc we have gotten in all of Star Trek, in my opinion. Um, and then there's, oh, I'm trying to go through. I mean, Worf going through, I mean, Worf had his own struggles because, you know, he's, is he Klingon? Is he human? Mm-hmm. Does he try too hard to be Klingon to overcompensate? You know, there's a lot of interesting character dynamics there, but like Samurai Worf was a brilliant idea. Mm-hmm. Where oh, he's, yeah. he's touch, he's Love in touch it. with himself. <laughs> oh my God. And like, the new Curleth also just like perfect. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm a sucker for a Batleth, but like he's that new sword is great. And um And I loved that being in a being like in the era of streaming, I, I actually loved that we got to see some of the violence and gore associated <laughs> with those going oh, on weapons. Yeah, you know? <laughs> gore if gore is used properly, it's mm-hmm. it's very effective. And like mm-hmm. we never really got to see the true skill of Worf Mm -hmm. until until he rescues Rafi and I'm just like oh I think everybody's wanted to decapitate a Ferengi but we didn't get to see it till now (laughs) that was awesome it was so cool oh (laughs) oh that that is very accurate I love you know the the samurai Worf it was it was a brilliant angle to go go it down because there's a lot of paths they could have gone with Worf, and I really like I really like that one. I think it was it was a very it, it was very appropriate for his his character journey over the years. Oh, absolutely! And that whole white beard look, which mm-hmm. they ripped off of—I um, don't remember the name of the character from Kill Bill. Mm, uh huh. And, and I'm like, it, it looks. He looks. Well, I'm just glad Worf looked like Worf, and we didn't have a whole debate about what Klingon should look like. Oh, thank God! <laughs> yes, absolutely, thank God. But it was you imagine yeah. a Discovery mask on on Worf, <laughs> saying oh, this is the new Worf. Oh my God, that, that would not have gone over well. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh. like, 
he's he's sort of come into a touch with himself. And, but he was a little distant at first. You know, he calls everybody by their ranks mm-hmm. for the first couple episodes, his first couple appearances, until he settles back in, and then Riker is Riker again. And but he's he's come a long way, though. That whole weird thing where he's like very very happy to see Deanna, not so much maybe flirting with her, but much more open was <laughs> Riker's like you know is this still part of the torture that's yeah. my wife bro <laughs> like uh. I mean, it it added a lot and then actually one of the other character journeys i i really was you know you have to think about a little and then there's much more nuance is, is jordy hmm. mm-hmm. you know i mean data's death broke him and they didn't really show enough of that in nemesis i mean if your best friend dies and then you're supposed to just carry on like you know, I mean, Picard's the lead in Nemesis, obviously. They're going to play more to – he's going to get more screen time. But, like, I mean, Jordy, it, it just broke him. There's a scene um, – it's a deleted scene where um, Worf and Jordy clean out Data's quarters and, mm-hmm. at the end of Nemesis. And uh, Spot actually goes to Worf. And, like, Jordy just looks like – I mean, he makes Eeyore look like Winnie the Pooh. Mm-hmm. He's just so just wrecked and – I don't know. And like, you got to see in that some of those character dynamics where he's talking about like data, you broke me. Like it took me years to rebuild my life. And if I hadn't had my children, mm-hmm. which also very curious to see who Mrs. LaForge is. Yes. Uh huh. Yes. I'm very curious about that as well. <laughs> um, and also fun little sidebar. And I didn't catch this till I watched a YouTube video. So Sydney, Alondra, and I believe the th- there's a third child named in All Good Things. Mm-hmm. Edward's his dad. I don't remember if it's Edward. It's a, it's a boy. But they use the same children's names for Geordie's children that he names to Picard in the vineyard in All Good Things, which was a deep cut I didn't catch. I didn't catch that either. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, wow. So there is there another LaForge child floating around? A son? Maybe? That's that again. Interesting. <laughs> there's the... the We'll touch on the future potential later, I'm sure, but it's just like he, how he's come from like where he was, and he's basically rebuilt himself. Because not gonna lie, I was I was kind of he was very curt with Picard, which I'm mm-hmm. like, bro, like it, it, it's Jean Luc Picard. How are you going to talk to him like that? Yeah. <laughs> oh. No, absolutely, absolutely, and like you know, he yeah, he was an he was an interesting he was an interesting addition to this season, and and I think like his I think it was it was it was very interesting how they played how they played him off as as being way more cautious now, and being mm-hmm. you know being way more kind of you know standoffish when it comes to you know like going on these adventures you know he's he's aged a bit you know he's like well he's you know maybe a little wiser a little bit more careful now and like said he has a family now that he has to protect, and I thought it was very I thought it was it was just a very very. Uh, I didn't expect them to go in the direction that they went with him. And, uh, you know, that was, I think something with, with this entire third season that I did actually enjoy that I felt that it really towed the line perfectly between the nostalgia, uh, between, you know, unexpected storylines, uh, characters being different, but still the same, they towed, they towed that line perfectly because I felt like my expectations were always subverted, but not in a negative way. It wasn't in a way that I wasn't happy about. I could not agree more because every time I was like, well, how are they going to do this? Are they mm-hmm. going to do that? And it's like they never – I never figured it out because mm-hmm. if you figure out something before you've watched it or before it's over, mm-hmm. it just – it's a, it's a buzzkill for me. Mm-hmm. Yes, um, mm-hmm. I think it is for most people. But it just – like you said, they subverted it. But it, it, it always stopped and made you think like, oh, well, I didn't consider that, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, no, but- that that's very true. And like, you know, one of the char- one you know, because obviously the entire Picard series is obviously about Picard's journey, basically his final journey. Um, and, you know, we see different aspects of that. You know, the, the first season is, you know, is him basically, you know, kind of, you know, rediscovering who he really is basically and kind of, you know, being a broken down old man and, you know, being able to come back from that, you know, season two is obviously him going, delving into the trauma of his childhood, you know, what makes him mm-hmm. really tick? Why, you know, why is he the way he is? Um, and I really kind of liked the focus on family in this third season, because that was something that Picard, it was always something he deeply, deeply wanted, you know, even though he never had, you know, even though he never had it. Cause in, ge- uh, in generations, as we 
you know, talked a little bit about before, you know, he lost his family, you know, in that. And he was, you know, we have that kind of whole sub subplot of him being the last Picard, basically. Uh, and we see kind of how how much that affects him, realizing that he doesn't have anyone anymore, basically. Uh, and I think seeing that journey in season three of him realizing that he he does have people now. He has a son, you know, he he has, you know, a relationship with Beverly again. Uh, and seeing the lengths that he will go to protect his family and to protect his son was something I really liked a lot. Uh, and it was something I didn't expect at all, uh, you know, from his character in this third season. They, It's almost like he has that line in the last episode, like he didn't realize what part of him was missing until he had Jack mm -hmm. in like th the perfect way to summarize what you just said. Absolutely. Um, just, it, yeah, it's exactly. And cause I mean, he, I mean, he's had some traumas and you know, the life of a captain is a lonely one. Mm -hmm. Very and, much so. um, that's an old Naval saying if memory serves. Um, but it's just his whole journey. Like, and, uh, I mean, getting back, I mean, opening sequence, you know, okay, why is Beverly contacting Picard? And oh my God, Beverly, uh -huh. <laughs> we didn't even get to touch on that, but uh -huh. she's, I would not want to make Beverly mad. I think we were both in agreement on that. <laughs> yes. Um, and he just, he's come so far and like, you know, he, he sort of was down in the depths of despair, like waiting to die. I think he says, mm -hmm. and you know, he comes back and, and like how they played at the beginning is about his son and Jack, which also I can't believe I never, I kind of figured out it was kind of obvious it was his son, mm -hmm. but how it never occurred to me, they would name him Jack Crusher, which first off, brilliant by Terry Metalis and team. Like it just never even occurred to me. And also Ed Spillier's perfect casting. Oh yes. Uh, he, outstanding. <laughs> even though like, I know a lot of people say, well, he's 35 playing like a 23 year old. I'm like, just it's, it's Hollywood. You got to let some things go. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. um, but you know, he's, everybody else is like John Luke. I mean, the accent, like the, the, the bravado, the suave, like, you know, I don't know what you're talking about. It's like, you got to know who his dad is, right? Uh, <laughs> Riker says it to him. And we get that great moment at the end of episode two, when he, it, re it finally, like he accepts it and acknowledges it and just, becomes the captain we all love and remember um, and takes charge. And he just, it's, and then, you know, there's some resentment and part of it, it it's his fault that crack he made um, where Jack goes to see him in the bar and he yes. goes mm -hmm. like, Oh my God. Like, it's like, go ahead and rip my heart out and throw it back in my no. face. <laughs> and, and like, he knows he realizes what he's done. And it's, I mean, Patrick Stewart is one of the greatest actors of any generation, it, pardon the pun again, didn't even mean to do it that time, <laughs> but like, he's just like when he, if he wants to make you feel, he's going to make you feel. And he just, he nails it. Mm -hmm. And, Oh, I just, there's so many wonderful character moments. And the line he says, uh, I'll just touch briefly on this, um, where he speak well, after data comes back and we mm -hmm. actually get it's data. Mm -hmm. And, um, uh, he talks about, I hope we don't dishonor the other you that mm -hmm. passed away at the end of season one. Mm -hmm. And which was a nice callback to acknowledge it. And also like, you, you can't forget where you've come from. You may not always like where you've been, mm -hmm. but you have to acknowledge it and move on. And I felt like they did that there. And it also added a nice character moment for both he and data. Mm -hmm. Um, It just was, I don't know. It, I, 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 I could eat it up. I loved every minute of it. No, that's, that's very true. And, you know, I, I did like that callback, you know, because, you know, because obviously, you know, you know, we have data back in a way, you know, this is kind of a different type of data, you know. Um, but yeah, I liked that they referenced, you know, what came before and stuff, because I do feel like, I do feel like the season three of Picard that we got right now, or the, the one that we got, uh, was not the original season three that was being planned. Cause I completely cause I, agree. Yeah, Cause I know that it was always planned as a three season show, but I, I do feel like with season one and season two, like what they had established, I do feel like they were going towards something else. And then 
basically Terry came in and <laughs> pitched this idea and they were like, we're going with that now. Um, <laughs> and, you know, and I, I, I am, I, I would love to hear at some point what the original plan was for season three, just not because I would have wanted that because I think the, what we got was perfect, but I am curious to, to just see what that original plan uh, was. But, uh, but yeah, I definitely feel, feel like there, there was some other stuff and I'm glad that they, that they acknowledged, you know, certain aspects from those first two seasons. Um, and, you know, to kind of respect those character, those character journeys, you know, one moment that I loved so much in uh and it was in the finale, the final episode uh, was, you know, I loved that there was one element that subverted my expectations and it subverted it in the best way was going into the episode Vox and into that final episode. I thought I knew exactly what was going to happen that I was like, okay, you know, Picard is going to get in, he's going to uh, turn, you know, his son back, his son is going to, you know, take control of the board, kill the queen, and that's going to be what it is. And I loved that they did not go that direction. Um, I loved that they went in and created this bizarre, demented family uh, dynamic of like Picard as the father, the Borg queen as the mother, you know, and Jack yes. as the son. It, it, I love yes. that. Yes. <laughs> and, know? and then they, they totally went like mm-hmm. first two seasons of Voyager body horror with the Borg queen, which was, Oh, she was horrible. Very, it, it, yeah, it was horrifying. It was terrifying. Mm-hmm. And yet in Alice Krieg is just so good. Oh, like so even good. just in the voiceover, she's just mm-hmm. so good. Mm-hmm. But yeah, that, that, tw- like you said, that twisted sick, like family and like, yeah, I mean, great. Just like you figured, like like you talked about subverting expectations. Like, totally, a lot of the stuff. So the night before this aired, I thought I found a huge spoiler mm-hmm. when suppose there was a rumor floating around on the internet about that somehow this was the crew of the Enterprise C, and then you see the statue of Captain Rachel Garrett in Episode One, and I'm like, mm-hmm. please tell me I did not get this whole thing spoiled. Uh-huh. Luckily, <laughs> it didn't. But like, it just was. I'm so, totally didn't see the changelings coming. No, I did. That not was, either. that uh-huh. was brilliant. Also random fun fact. The first changeling when they were bit the big reveal drops in episode three, the guy, the guy who's twitching, like he's on, like going through withdrawal uh-huh. actually played Picard's youngest son in the generation's Christmas scene. Really? Oh, how interesting. <laughs> Cause oh. I'm like, like that leaked online. I'm like, wait, is that Picard's son? Or like <laughs> rampant speculation, of course, in the series. Um, but it just was like, like you talked about subverting everything. And um, I, I spent like, I would sit here and rack my brain trying to figure out who the villain was because like, Same. If, you go, uh-huh. if you go back and watch it, literally it's all blatantly in front of us. The, the uh, voiceover from Picard's log in episode one, mm-hmm. they where they're hiding out in the nebula from best of both worlds. Mm-hmm. You know, the first contact theme is the primary theme in the credits it's like it's all right in front of us Mm -hmm. and we just like the the best place to hide things is in plain sight like if you go back upon a rewatch it's like how did i not see this and that is absolutely true i loved it it was yeah it was everything there you know everything was there and it's like you know, because I remember I was like, I was racking my brain too. I was thinking like, okay, I was like, is this like, like a paw wraith, you know? Um, That's exactly what I thought. The red yeah. eyes. Uh-huh, the red eyes, you know? And then like, I was even like, okay, is this like a, an Iconian? Is this like a return to Iconian? And like the joke online, like with the Star Trek online community that I'm in, is that they <laughs> always say every villain we assume is an Iconian and it's not. <laughs> <laughs> It was, it was really funny but like i was just thinking like okay who who is this you know and i knew i knew going like i remember from that one you know uh uh interaction with the with the board queen and Vatic when when they when uh, the queen said your people are expendable and i was like okay this is like this is somebody i was trying to think who who views basically all species as expendable <laughs> you know i was so, like i oh. thought the, i thought the same thing and i'm like mm-hmm. okay who scares the changelings mm-hmm. the borg what it could and the borg makes the most sense because mm-hmm. that's their greatest enemy from mm-hmm. that generation but like my mind's i'm like is it species 8472 mm-hmm. you know and also having a do a male voiceover mm-hmm. to throw everybody off yes uh-huh. brilliant call because i'm like racking my brain like 
I'm like, I literally sat through on Paramount Plus, mm -hmm. scrolling through episode titles. Like, there's got to be something I missed uh, <laughs> trying it, to figure out who it is. No, that that's true because I'd heard leaks online of people saying that like the villain is from Next Generation. They were like, this is a, yes. this is a, a villain from Next Generation who they're going to be revisiting. And so I was like, I was, I was doing the same thing. I was scrolling through episodes on Memory Alpha, and I was thinking like, okay, who, who is a villain that they encountered who lived? You know who who would be good enough to be the final, you know, big bad. Cause I was like, you know, um, and it was just like, you know, I was racking my brain, but like you said, it was all there from the beginning. And man, I just, I loved, you know, like I loved how, how the boar queen was like feeding off of all the other drones. Um, yes. you know, like I loved that. And like, and like what I, what I really did like too, was that I loved that they didn't go with like this big fight between like Picard, his son and the queen, like, I really liked that. And people, you know, people like, uh, you know, people egg on Star Trek for being all, you know, being very emotional and focusing on like on the emotional side of things sometimes versus like action, you know, and like a lot of people dislike that. But, you know, I've never had a problem with it personally, but I loved that the climax of this between the, the three of them, between this Borg family was an emotional one, you know, that I loved you know, when Picard, he's like, I've never had a reason to go back to the collective until now. And when he's with his son, you know, inside the collective. And I love that he, you know, he basically is like, he's like, well, I'm going to stay with you then. If you're not going to leave, I'm not leaving. It was just like, oh, my heart. <laughs> oh, yeah, it, I'm like oh. sitting there like mouth agape. Like, oh, like, was... and he, they played it up brilliantly. Like, mm -hmm. I, I wouldn't have had the heart to kill any of them off either. Mm -hmm. like, yeah. I, honestly, like, I think we would have rioted. Yes. But like, I'm like, oh my God, are we going to lose one? Like, as long as it's not like Trip Tucker's death or uh -huh. God forget Han Solo's, we won't get into that. Yeah. But like, <laughs> like if it, it serves a purpose and we're sitting there like, oh my God. And they played it, like you said, Star Trek gets criticized for not being action mm -hmm. enough, mm -hmm. action oriented enough. But I think I saw it on either screen crush screen rant like they called also the whole enterprise d scene versus the cube oh, oh my god my if that's not like the greatest thing that's <laughs> the greatest space battle since wrath of khan uh-huh that was amazing and, oh and beverly's incredible and then what did they call they called it they said so they i mean flying it through the cube is it's the best possible i don't want to use the term rip off because it's a mm. negative connotation mm. but oh my god it's return of the jedi uh-huh <laughs> and but in the best possible way in screen crush i believe it is they called it like return of the enterprise or the rise of sky crusher and i'm like <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes that's brilliant oh it it, it was ab it was absolutely brilliant and it was like i i and i remember thinking oh this is like return of the jedi but like you said it was done in such a magnificent way and i loved that they that they establish just how badass the enterprise is you know like after after they've been pummeled this whole season by like vatic and you know and everything just to see him just go go you know guns a blazing in taking out the borg was just like i oh i loved it and and you know one thing i really liked about it too was that you know you know that you know, because we'd had like the Borg somewhat come back in season two and like a form of the Borg queen. It wasn't the same queen, um, mm -hmm. you know, and I loved that, you know, that the that they were able to bring the Borg back in a way that was not didn't feel like a retread or like a been there, done that. Um, you know, that it was like, it was a very unique thing of showing the evolution of the Borg of how they were trying to like be, you know, the next version of themselves. And, you know, that the queen and the cube were kind of all a little wrecked, you know, like not really working that well, you know, um, I, I just thought, I just thought it was brilliant the way they did it to make sure that it felt fresh still. Oh, absolutely. The, the, these Borg are, you know, the most dangerous, most dangerous animal is the wounded one. And they're mm -hmm. clearly wounded here. Like, mm -hmm. like, we knew Janeway did a number. I don't think any of us realized how big of a number Janeway did at them at mm -hmm. the end of Voyager. Um, but yeah, it was just, they're much more, because, you know, they it was always assimilate, assimilate this. Mm -hmm. And they're talking about eradicate. I'm like, oh, mm -hmm. she's, that okay, was, she's not yeah. only, she's not only looking terrifying, she's <laughs> sounding like a complete nut job uh-huh it, it's 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 very very true and like one thing that i i, I did like too because there had always been like a a theory basically kind of i remember going through the years you know of like 
is the Borg collective, is it all of the drones that is the collective or is the queen the collective? Like, I remember like people didn't really, like there were always people going back and forth of like, you know, of saying like, okay, like who's who basically is, you know, and I liked that season three pretty much confirmed that the Borg collective is the queen basically. Um, and that, you know, that it's like that the collective flows through her basically. And I, I really, I really actually liked that they did that. Cause I, I thought that it provided obviously, you know, like the big bad villain that was needed, but it also, it added some clarity to the Borg, which I, I enjoyed. That's a really interesting point. I hadn't considered that, but yeah, you're right. Cause I think like how the way that I always have had approached that question, is it the drones? Is it this? And the answer is yes. Yes. Yeah. Everything. <laughs> uh-huh. like, but it would be really interesting in the future, you know, what if there was like, say, a series of cubes that lost contact, mm-hmm. you know, is there many collectives out there now? Like, it's just very interesting. Like, there's a lot of potential for future stories. It just in that group, like, this is supposed to be the end of the Borg, but is it ever really the end of the Borg? You know it's what I true, mean? Because I feel like there's always going to be the Borg. Like, I don't think they can ever be fully eradicated. And like, and I agree with you. I think probably that that there is the possibility of other collectives, you know, because we see like in season one, when, when seven, you know, becomes the Borg queen, you know, that it's like, she basically has created this mini collective almost. Uh, That's and, right. Yes. You know, and, uh, and even though I was let down by that scene, that scene is still one of the most badass scenes when she plug when she gets plugged in and you see her eyes go black. Oh my gosh. Yeah. That was, <laughs> it was awesome and terrifying. I was like, uh-huh. Oh, this, this is, Ooh, uh-huh. <laughs> oh. but uh, yeah, it was like, that's very, that's very interesting because I do feel like, I mean, Star Trek as a, as a franchise is never going away. Like it's going to outlive us, you know, and it's going to be, it's going to be around forever as yes. long as there is, as long as there is media and like, and some form of like, of, of, you know, consumption of media, there will always be some type of Star Trek. And, and I do feel like the Borg will come back at some point in some way, you know, it'll probably be something different than what we were expecting, but I do think that they will be back somehow. Um, some new, new iteration maybe of them or something. But like you said, this was definitely the end of the, of the TNG era of the Borg. I think Um, whatever comes next will be very different. (laughs) Yeah, I completely agree. Mm -hmm. You know, um, and uh, it's yeah, it was just like oh, everything like I everything about that final sequence, though, is just like great. I, I loved I loved also that we got that 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 beautiful shot of the Borg Queen being incinerated. That shot was just so great. <laughs> oh, like, Terry Matthaus. What did he say? It's like no one's ever really dead unless you see them die. And I'm like, uh-huh. we need to make sure oh, yeah, she's dead and <laughs> yes. we needed to see her die. Oh, it was I, I, I loved her screaming after Picard. It was just oh, it was so great. It was it was so you know, cause we've, we've had the Borg as these villains and these horrible, horrible villains for so many decades. And it was just so, it was so fulfilling seeing, seeing them just be obliterated. <laughs> it really was. Uh, <laughs> it was. Oh man. This is great, man. Oh, uh, well, you know, um, I'm going to say uh, that, uh, you know, that this is a wrap for all of our listeners on our part one of, uh, of the Picard uh, season three uh, discussion and to kind of wrap up, uh, you know, there's a lot more to come in our, uh, in our part two episode. You definitely are not going to want to miss it. Uh, you know, we have a, just a bit of a tease, you know, we're going to go through some of our, our favorite aspects of the season, uh, some of our least favorite aspects. Uh, you know, we're going to talk a little bit about Star Trek legacy and what that might look like, what that might entail. And we're also going to dive in a little bit too on, uh, on how the series, all three seasons combined, how it kind of treats the character of Jean-Luc Picard and whether we feel it was a, uh, it did a good job portraying him or if it left something to be desired, we're going to go through all of that. Uh, so thanks so much, Jordan, for joining me for this, uh, for this part one. Uh, and, uh, I think we're going to have some exciting things to talk about in part two.